Welcome to the Papa George Policy Update. I have with me today a guest, Bob Taylor, who's a licensed real estate broker. Uh, and we're going to talk about uh, property taxes in Michigan, current trends, how you appeal your property taxes, and measures that are available to provide relief. Now, Bob is more than uh, just a real estate broker. Uh, he's been uh, very helpful. Some 200 people showed up in Royal Oak recently when uh, he, uh, I hosted the seminar, but the expert was Bob. And Bob, talk a little bit about uh, your background and uh, why we need to listen to you. <laughs> well, why people need to listen to me may be more their, their decision than any other, anybody else's. I've been selling residential real estate for 35 years. Uh, on a full-time basis. I've been, uh, recently became a member uh, several years ago of our Assessor's Board of Review in Bloomfield Township and have chaired the last two panels uh, whereby we sit down and review the tax appeal requests that are being made by the citizens of the township and then making a decision as to, to what should be done that's fair and equitable. Mm -hmm. I've also been on the Zoning Board of Appeals at the township and uh, I am currently the president-elect of the State Association of Realtors. Terrific. So you're perfect for the subject at hand today. Well, thank uh, you. Why don't you start <coughs> us out and uh, just uh, take us through. I know you brought some slides. Well, let's see if we can figure out where we're at nationally. Uh, the, the bigger problem that you run into is, is all real estate's local, and so while you're going to see a lot of national data, we will get into some local data in a bit. But the real crux of the matter is simple supply and demand. Uh, we were very fortunate to have a significant uh, uh, panel of experts in Washington, D.C. when we visited several weeks ago. And again, they all said it boils down to nothing but supply and demand. And if you look at these two, cur these two charts, you'll see that the top one, which is supply, and the bottom one, which is demand, going in opposite directions. And uh, needless to say, when that happens, you end up with a huge amount of excess inventory. Uh, that resulted, excuse me, that resulted in something that we call a, an absorption rate. And what that really is, is the relationship between inventory and sales. And what it shows is that while the absorption rate seemed to stay at a relatively even pace of just above uh, 20%, it fell very drastically in 08 down to about 10% where it has remained since. And you can even see on a monthly basis, which is the lower uh, chart, exactly how that's also taken place. The, the, the sudden drop-off um, in the absorption rate was the combination of the inventory staying excessively high and demand falling off very drastically. And that was because demand just couldn't be sustained. There is good news in the marketplace, though. And the good news is very simple. This is Oakland County and this is across the entire county of Oakland. This information was taken on the 26th, which I think is Thursday of last week, so it's very current. What you're gonna see here is uh, the real high number, I believe, is 2004, um, and you're gonna see there that the absorption rate, again, that relationship between inventory and sales is very high. Okay, that's the green bar. That's the green bar. And that says that houses are getting sold fairly reasonably and you don't have to wait a year to get your house sold. You don't have to wait a year to get your house sold. If you're a buyer, you're enjoying the buying process because you're getting into a home and you're excited about it. Um, you can see that that falls off uh, from 04 to, yeah, 04 to 05 and then falls literally off the cliff between 05 and 06. Uh, 06 being the, uh, blue, the, bar? the blue bar, yeah. which goes very low. The good news in this is that 09 uh -huh. is the brown bar. And what you also can see, by the way, if you look at the one that's pink, is that starting in March, excuse me, starting in April, um, the absorption rate started to exceed the previous year. In the first quarter of last year, it did not. In the second quarter of last year, it started and it has continued. And it's now at the point where 09, the 09 relationship between inventory and sales is better than it was in 05. 
excuse me, 06, 06 um, okay. which, is, which is a huge plus. Uh -huh. uh, if that trend continues, it means that we are definitely at a bottom, um, and uh, it also means that we should start to see some, hopefully, some softening of the decline in housing prices that we've seen over the last several months. One of the reasons we've seen that decline is because of the sale of homes by banks and the U.S. government that have taken them back in a foreclosure process. When you and I met back in um, February, yeah. the graph that's on the uh, left mm -hmm. represented the inventory that we were the, the inventory situation that we were dealing with. And there you can see that you've got a relatively high combination of both um, bank resales and what we call s short sales, which is where the seller is trying to sell it while they still own it for less than they owe, and the bank needs to enter into the negotiations. That accounted for about 30% of the, uh, yeah, about 30% of the sales. Uh, what we're then looking at is is uh, bank resales um, at a uh, number of about 15%. You'll see that that number has declined significantly by the end of last week. Okay, now let me. Let me address the guy who's out there saying, man, my house has been on the market forever and I don't know when I'm ever going to sell it. Uh, it's good that the sort of the rate of decline is slowing, but uh, it's going to take a while before it starts up again, isn't it? Unfortunately, that's the reality check. It's going to take a long time. If you don't like the number you're going to get for it today, it'll probably be back to that number in the next... I'm going to say 18 months. In between, it's probably going to drop some more. Uh -huh. Eventually, it may get to a number that you like. That's probably going to be three to five years out. So if, I always tell people, if you don't need to do this, don't. Yeah. If you need to do it, you need to do it now. Because even though we're close to the bottom, as far as the one piece of information, that relationship uh -huh. between inventory and sales, we're still away from, we're still not at the bottom of value yet, which again is being impacted by bank resales. This, this uh, top graph here, uh, you can see that, that uh, the number of bank resales, which is our, um, our red line here, is about 20% in the second quarter of 07. Um, it peaks uh, in the first quarter of 09 at just under 60%. Now that's a huge increase, and when an appraiser is required to use a bank resale in his determination of value at the time a home is sold, or at the time a homeowner may be simply applying for a refinance, it has a significant impact on, on the value of the property. Um, as you can see in the second chart, average sales price in Oakland County uh, peaked uh, in about looks like July of '07 at just under th just under uh, two hundred thousand dollars, and it is now below a hundred thousand uh, dollars. That's a fifty percent drop. Sure. All right. So, uh, in simple terms here, if I've got a house, my choice is let's say I uh, it's empty. Mm -hmm and I downsize, or for whatever reason, I now have two houses. Mm -hmm. I see the price dropping. At the same time, I got to pay taxes on both houses. Mm -hmm. I got to keep it reasonably cool and reasonably warm through uh, weather changes so nothing bad happens. So I have a continuing expense here. Significant. And I have to sort of balance that how many more months am I going to keep paying versus accepting a lower price and selling it soon? I agree. And so that's kind of the balance I have to go through. That is the balance. And, it, and if I just simply say, I'll wait till the price comes up again, I got to count all that money I spent, heat, light, so forth, plus taxes. And you also